back to the channel. Uh, if you're new here, make sure to subscribe so you can see my latest videos coming out. And, uh, you know, definitely don't forget to turn on the post notifications too so that you guys can see when they come out. Um, I'm going to try to start making a schedule here. Uh, it's kind of tough, but, you know, I would like to start making a schedule for you guys. Um, I'm thinking maybe around Wednesday or Thursday. Let me know what you guys think. Wednesday or Thursday might be a good day to post. Um, so, yeah, I'll try to keep them coming out every Wednesday. Um, but, yeah. Anyway, pretty pumped. I got my timing belt so I can finally get this thing back together. Um, now that I got all the plug stuff out of the way, we can get into it. Um, I still left the other one on just for now, just so the timing didn't get moved. But the engine is at TDC. And uh, what that means is top dead center, right? So you got my marks here on the cam that I actually hit with a paint marker. You can see that they are white marks. Hopefully the camera picks them up. But those white marks right there are the two sides of the cam. And those guys line up with the flat spot on the cylinder head on both sides. And if you had the valve cover off, which you normally do when you're doing this, um, because when you had the valve cover off, you're allowed access to uh, this guy. You gotta take that little plastic cover off and everything. Um, but that's the only way you're able to get that plastic cover off is by taking the valve cover off. But I chose to leave that off so that I can access this while leaving the valve cover on because it's a pain to take that off every time I wanna mess around in here. So I left the top cover off and uh you know i actually took everything all apart already so if you guys are you know unfamiliar with that there's plenty of videos on that but uh it's relatively simple i'll go over it real quick basically you got one two three four and five and six up here and those six bolts will remove this lower cover and mine's all chewed up because the belt was rubbing into it and then I cut this section for my belt because my alternator is relocated and it's gonna be rubbing so I cut it out preemptively so it won't burn up my belt but anyway that's irrelevant uh, we're gonna start working on this guy so it's at TDC you can see those two marks are there and there's a little marking on the cam that says up and right there it says up and that is pointing in the up direction obviously and then we have our uh, Right here is our front balance shaft, and that's a bit of a closer look at both of those timing marks right there, so hopefully you can see that. Um, the other timing marks that we have to look for are on the crank, which is on the bottom, and you can see that with the pulley on or with the pulley off, but with the pulley on, it's more difficult, or it's easier to see when you have the cover on and everything, but when you have the pulley off, you can't really see it too good. When the motor's out of the car, obviously it's way easier, but if you get down underneath, you can see it, um, and it is lined up. But once we get the balance shaft pulley off there, off of the crank, you guys will be able to see the crank pulley a lot better. But anyway, or the crank gear, rather, that, that uh, has the timing belt on it. So we're going to get into it here, and I'm going to go ahead and pull this belt off and show you guys how to throw on a new belt and tension it. So I got this thing pretty much all taken apart. Um, yeah, it is as taken apart as I really want it. So I left all the pulleys the way that they were. All I did was loosen the 14 millimeter tensioner. And I also loosened the bolt that was in this bolt hole right over here. Because I had one that was in there and cranked tight just to keep the tensioner from coming loose. Because uh, I didn't, I guess I didn't like trust the tensioner. But I don't really think you need to do that. But it's just extra reassurance, so I can show you guys that after. But as far as everything else, it's pretty self-explanatory how it comes apart. You just to make sure you don't move any of the pulleys. And, you know, after you loosen the tensioner, you take it all off. I have the whole assembly here, just how it is on the car, basically. So this bolt here has got to come out. It's a 10 mil. So this guy will come out. And then you'll be able to, you know, you'll take your tensioner off as well. This is the 14. And then you have your washer. And then you've got this guy, this arm, which has this spring connected to it, and that comes off. And then you have this larger tensioner that's for the front balance shaft there, or the, the balance shaft belt. And then you've got this tensioner that goes all the way back. And my tensioner actually does feel a bit worn out. It's a little bit difficult to turn, to be honest. Like, you can see, it's not like freely spinning with one finger. Like, it, it is freely spinning. But it takes like effort 
like if I don't push hard, it doesn't spin. So kind of hanging up a little bit. That might be due to having the belt too tight. So this new tensioner right here, you can see that uh, it spins, if I hold it correctly, it spins much more freely. Yeah, so I think that this is much better. So hopefully the belt spins more freely and I hope that we don't tension it too much this time and we don't wear this thing out prematurely. But, you know, this thing did its job, didn't fail on me or anything like that. We got a new belt and new components to put on. So I'm going to assemble all this stuff, put it back in the car and uh, should be ready to rip. Okay, so it's been a while since I did the timing belt on this thing and I had forgotten, but the main takeaway is you got a pin over here that you have to put from, there's, it's on the block side and it goes in from the back into this pulley when you put it on or else the hole will only line up down here and it seems like, you know, what's going on, but it's that guy, so the pin's got to be in, um, just found that out, but now we're good to go and I'm going to go ahead and get the tensioner down just loose and then I'll go ahead and put the springs on and then we're ready to go so I'll go ahead and start putting the belt on and I haven't moved any of the pulleys at any point so you want to make sure you got the tensioner loose enough so that you can actually move the uh, tensioners here so this guy the 14 is pretty loose you can see and that means these guys function properly so you can see it it moves when I push down on it and the spring pulls it back all the way. Kind of snaps back and same with this one over here. And these springs are actually pretty good. They feel like they're uh, pretty strong. So I think these springs should be enough to tension the belt properly. So we're going to go ahead and try it. I'm going to go ahead and throw the lower belt on. So I got the belts on. It's not really something that you can easily do while holding a camera, so I figured I would just get it on and then tell you guys about my process afterwards. Um, this guy stays in place for the most part, the front balance shaft. The rear balance shaft likes to move, and that guy is only in time once every three revolutions. So you got to make sure you don't mess that up unless you have the specific tool. Or what I like to use is a door hinge pin. And like anybody has a door hinge pin, just go take one from one of your doors in your house or something, and you can put it back when you're done. But use a door hinge pin, and there's a 12 millimeter on the back of the block that you pull out just to the right of the freeze plug back there. I won't be able to show you, but where that axle is right here, it's uh, right above the axle on the back of the block, and it's an access hole. And if you remove that 12, you can stick that door hinge pin in there. And then when you turn this thing, if the door hinge pin goes in all the way and locks and doesn't let you turn it either way, hardly at all, and it's in time, which in time for this little guy down here, Let's see if I can get some light. That's a negative on the light. <laughs> but yeah, you can see the timing mark on that guy uh, on the little pulley down there. And that guy actually lines up with that little mark on the block that's behind it right behind in between the belt I'm holding the camera and the flashlight so I can't point but it is there I assure you that little piece of metal it lines up with is the timing mark even though it doesn't look like it it is and so if your pin goes in and you're at that location then you are good to go if you spin it and the pin goes in but it's not there then you know that you're not in the correct orientation um, but yeah so that's what that is you're gonna make sure you're right on there and as long as you didn't move the crankshaft or move the camshaft, um, that should still be in time. And you should verify that to make sure that that's in time. Sometimes these guys up here can be tricky. Um, if you do get it messed up, 
when you do have the whole motor part, you know, you got to time it properly and everything. But when you're doing this, you just shouldn't move it. And then you should be good to go, put it back together just like it was. But if you do end up moving it, um, you know, there's things you can do to check. You can take the number one uh, spark plug out and you can put something inside of there and you can spin it, uh, spin the motor over down low until that number one goes all the way up to the top. Then you know you're at TDC. Um, that's one way you could do it. The cam, uh, you know, obviously those two lines just have to be lined up with the uh, cylinder head and then you're good to go. So hopefully this new belt works out for us. I'm going to go ahead and tension this thing now and uh, I'll explain how I ended up doing my tensioning process after. As far as the, uh, the belt getting it on, the balance shaft belt can be kind of tricky. What I ended up doing was um, I loosened the tensioner all the way and then tightened the 14 a little bit so I had all the slack. And then I took it and I put it on this balance shaft first and lined that up because that one kept trying to go off time on me. So I put it on that one um, because you can't really get it on after because there's kind of a flange here. And then I put it on the other one which I had the door pin in which locks that one from moving the rear balance shaft. And then I was actually able to sort of pry it down and slide that rear uh, gear over it and uh, make sure that it was lined up and I didn't move either of my marks here. So now that we got all that done, we're going to go ahead and tension it and then I'll show you guys what I did for that. Alright guys, so the key here, the key here with the tensioning is a little bit of extra pressure. Just a little bit of extra pressure. That's all you're going to need. And uh, yeah, just got to make sure you stayed on that pin there like I did, just making sure. Um, just because, you know, things look a little crooked for me. Um, the tensioner looks a little cockeyed, but I did spin the motor over quite a few times and the belt did not come off, so I think we're going to be good to go. Um, everything also stayed in time, so I'm happy about that. Tensioner's tight. I went ahead and threw the crank pulley back on, tightened it down, and uh, then I went ahead and spun the motor over to the left. Uh, you know, you always want to go the direction the motor spins, which is counterclockwise. I also took all the plugs out to make it easier to spin over, which did help out a lot. And here's all the plugs. They're, they're getting pretty nasty. I might replace them pretty soon. They might be okay for the meantime, but, uh, you know, definitely going to get some new ones in there. And uh, for any of you guys wondering, I run uh, NGK uh, BKR7Es, which are one heat range colder than stock. So I think uh, from stock, they're, they're eights. So we went to a seven. Um, or the other way around. Yeah, I think it's the other way around. I think stock there is six. We went to a seven. Eight, I think, is colder. Um, but yeah, so anyway, that's pretty much it for this whole timing belt tensioning thing. It's not too hard. You just want to make sure that when you go ahead and tension the belt, you don't put too much force by prying on it. And also, you want to make sure that you actually do get it tensioned enough. If the springs are worn out and it seems kind of sloppy, then uh, you can add some extra tension with your fingers before tightening down the 14 mil. That is the tensioner down there. But other than that, pretty simple. I've done it a couple other times, so that's why this is uh, kind of a cakewalk for me. But the first couple times I did struggle with it, and uh, it can be a pain, but there's plenty of good guides out there. Sorry I'm not doing the best of showing you guys how to do it. I'm just trying to get this thing done, and uh, I'm sure you guys know how to do a timing belt. That's like uh, that's the first thing you do when you get any old Honda is do a timing belt because it's always neglected because nobody wants to mess with it and nobody wants to pay a grand for the dealership to do it. So, you know, that's just the way it goes. But, yeah, change your timing belt, you'll have a nice long-lasting motor. And I think I might have even been a tooth off down there on the rear balance shaft. So we'll see if this motor runs even smoother. I probably won't know because all the solid motor mount crap now. But, anyway, I'm going to get to putting the... Uh, other stuff back on this thing throw the cover back on and I'll show you guys the next step in the process here We're gonna do a little bit of uh, motor mount work. I'll save that for the next video though
pump, guys. I'm not gonna let it run too much longer so I don't die in my garage, but freaking thing. It's so quiet up here. It means there's no exhaust leaks, which is super awesome. This thing's not gonna be that loud up front. I'm freaking pumped. Um, I don't see any condensation coming out up here. This car's still super cold. Not gonna bother letting it fully warm up, but uh, yeah, it seems like everything's running really awesome. Uh, timing's definitely right on. The car's running like a champ, so super pumped. Alternator seems like it's charging. It's spinning great. No issues there, so guys, we are ready to go. I'm so stoked. So pumped. So happy. This thing sounds so awesome. I mean, how can you not like that? Sounds great. Yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys want to see this thing rip and see it turned up, because we're definitely going to turn this thing up now. I'm super hyped. This straight pipe definitely has me pumped. So. I'm gonna go turn this thing off, but thanks for watching guys. Remember to subscribe, like the video, and stay tuned. Peace out.